see if you can find us a real case. My foot feels numb, like it's fallen asleep. I don't feel well. I know there's something wrong with me. Oh, God. Your toe just fell off. Well, that's one way to atone for his sins, just to the point where even the house was questioning whether this case was worth pursuing, our priest's toe turns into a forbidden mantle ornament. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 5, Episode 15, Unfaithful. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 house episodes, and this will be episode 106. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before house does as a doctor working in London. Food's gone, Daryl, we're closed. You wouldn't happen to have an extra coat in there, would you? Yeah. That's not funny, freak. No one is laughing, Daniel. Well, I was hoping you might be available for Rachel's Simchat, but it's a- Jewish baby naming ceremony. There'll be plenty of wine and nice people you can quietly mock. Where's this guy? He's a drunk priest who hallucinated Jesus. You went out of your way to pick him? This is nothing. Atropine toxicity, occipital lobe tumor. Run an EEG for epilepsy, CT is brain for tumors. This priest has been doing good his whole life to meet Jesus, but I'm pretty sure this isn't how he imagined it. Probably more rivers of milk and honey, and less blood stains on the porch. Also, if he can levitate, then surely his blood should as well. Not sure where I'd look for for an answer on that one. House thinks this astral vision could be due to a tumor or epilepsy, but that doesn't quite make sense. You see, he mentioned the occipital lobe, which is the vision area of the brain, but a tumor there would just knock out visual perception rather than creating new types of it. Tumors in the frontal lobe instead can cause psychosis with hearing voices and seeing things which can mimic schizophrenia. There's even a case report from 2022 of one 46 year old man who started getting seizures and hallucinations back in 2012. It wasn't until 2015 that he made it onto a psychiatric unit and the team failed to realize that the patient had a dad who died of an unknown brain tumor. He managed for five years after even that admission and then was readmitted again in 2020 and sent to a different psych unit for management of schizophrenia. It wasn't until his fourth medical attendance, nine years after his first presentation, that the team realized he had a brain tumor the size of a mango sitting in the middle of his head. By this point, the tumor was inoperable and the patient passed away. If someone had just been curious enough to do a proper family history and picked up the fact that his dad died young with a brain tumor, instead of just loading him with antipsychotics, he could still be with us today. So I'm glad to hear House is giving this a bit of extra thought while the rest of the team dismiss our patient's symptoms. Seizure is a possibility here, but isn't really a house level diagnosis. We know the title is called Unfaithful and we can already already see our priest likes a bit of the devil's juice, so maybe he's been unfaithful to his religious beliefs. He's in contact with homeless people, if he got HIV that could leave him vulnerable to all kinds of brain diseases like progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, cryptococcus, histoplasmosis, toxoplasmosis, TB, aspergillus, and the list of possible pathogens playing space invaders with his brain goes on. Interested to see the results of these scans. We'll go check his house of God for toxins. 14. Hold up. Job or relationship? Your choice. If you don't split, you must quit. You've got until the end of this fake case to decide. Four years ago, a teen in a youth group at my church accused me of inappropriate contact. So the kid lied? He was confused. You don't have to admit you did anything with the kid. You weren't always a priest. I wanted to be since I was 12. I entered the seminary when I was 17. The fairy tale ended a long time ago. House doesn't want either one of us to quit. He wants this. He's got two lab rats in a maze and thrown in one piece of cheese. If everybody lies, that includes teenage boys. We're done testing him for things he doesn't have. Case is over. We're not splitting up. You were fine with Chase and Cameron dating. You obviously don't actually have an You're issue. You're fired. So, badge. Fine. Find us a real case. My foot feels numb, like it's fallen asleep. I don't feel well. I know there's something wrong with me. Oh God, your toe just fell off. Well, that's one way to atone for his sins. Just to the point where even the house was questioning whether this case was worth pursuing, our priest's toe turns into a forbidden mantle ornament. So what can cause that? 
and hallucinations, well, a toe falling off is a vascular problem, which means one of two things. Either he got a clot there that suddenly blocked the blood vessel, or he had some kind of vasculitis that has gradually been getting worse that also has affected his brain. The vasculitis is more likely to be subtle and get missed by a CT of the head, so I'd hedge my bets on that. How does that all link with being unfaithful in his job as a priest that he no longer believes in? Well, he seems pretty down on his luck. Maybe he's tried to end his own life with a toxin that's triggered his symptoms. Or maybe he hasn't been maintaining the holy water properly and now he's been drinking it when it's contaminated with some juicy bugs. A study from back in 2012 showed that 86% of holy water in Austria actually contained fecal matter. House loves his irony and surely there's nothing more ironic than the thing that's supposed to heal you making you sick. That would mean it'd have to be an infectious disease that causes it, so maybe it's necrotizing fasciitis. That's a flesh-eating bacteria that can slowly move into your body and eat entire chunks of it. It's very rare, but once infected, up to one in five people die straight away from the infection, so necrotizing fasciitis from holy water has to be my first diagnostic guess. Also, did Foreman just get sacked? Who's gonna stop House from turning the hospital into a giant amusement park now? Bouncy castles in A&E are inevitable, used as a wall to bounce his patients straight back out the front door. Surely it can't be true. Question for you smart people, what percentage of doctors serve more than 30 years before retiring? Options are 63%, 38%, or 24%. Answers down below, and I'll give it to you at the end of the video. Must be my lucky day. I get to keep our pederast priest after all. Go check out the house that they would have checked had this been a real case. Page 13, tell her to run the blood for CO and get the priest in a hyperbaric chamber before anything else falls off. Looks like a heart attack. You falsified medical records. Put this hospital's reputation in jeopardy. I can't get a decent position at another hospital without a recommendation. I'm sorry. EKG ruled out heart attack. Could be a clotting disorder. You two do an angio. I've been wanting to introduce myself. He's hallucinating Jesus, lost his toe, and now he's had a heart attack without having a heart attack. There are turtles stuck on their back that are having better days than him. Although, have you seen a turtle flip themselves around? It's pretty fantastic. I have to say though, this chest pain, classic heart attack type symptom that just goes away suddenly fits with a few things. It could be from the stomach, like gastritis or lungs due to an embolism, but both of those would likely have ongoing signs. They wouldn't just do a Houdini and disappear. That makes me think that it could be from the heart as a condition called Prinz Metal Angina. Our heart needs constant blood flow to deliver the nutrients that it needs, but on occasion, the arteries which have a muscular wall can spasm and block the circulation. There's usually a trigger to this like cocaine, amphetamines or marijuana, but something tells me he's not lighting one up in a 100% oxygen chamber. So what are the other triggers? Well, cold weather, exercise, or some medications like pseudoephedrine can cause it. In theory, you can get this spasm at any part in the body, which includes the brain or the toes, so that could also explain his other symptoms, but the trigger isn't quite clear. To be fair, a nasty disease called botulism could technically do it, but that's usually from homemade canned food, so I can't see how it fits with being unfaithful. I'm gonna need more clues. You're really a virgin. Lungs are clean, no embolism, no pleurisy, no pneumonia. I'm sorry, this is gonna hurt. You feel that? Yeah. Regional anesthesia is a new symptom. It's neurological. We're on a nerve conduction study. I heard there might be an opening in the ER. I did an ER rotation in Miami. Don't quit. He knows it probably won't work out, and he's actually doing you a favor. I know they're looking for someone at Mercy. I'll make a call. Got something. Looks like intercostal neuralgia. I see nothing. My right eye went blind. Nothing structurally wrong with the eye. And that leaves infection. You think his spleen? Go get a biopsy. If I quit, will you rehire Foreman? Who am I to say no? Why do the Lord's work if the Lord has left the building? I've been with the church my entire adult life. You act like you don't care about anyone, but here you are saving lives. His spleen is fine, just some insignificant traces of minor bugs. Which minor bugs? It's the holy water. He has pneumocystis. He never makes anyone sick unless they have a compromised immune system. Whoa, 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 wait. I think I know why that teenage boy was confused. He has HIV. I feel like I've watched so many episodes now that I could probably start writing them. The HIV, the holy water, the irony, it's all just 
brilliant. That's if he actually has what he says he has. Maybe he doesn't have HIV, maybe something else is suppressing his immune system and they were wrong to judge. That means that this pneumocystis is more of a symptom of the problem rather than the cause itself. So what is the cause? Well, dioxins can cause immunosuppression, but we usually get exposed to them through food like contaminated meat, dairy or fish. There are also PCBs which are present in plastics, but they've been banned since the 80s, so that wouldn't explain it either. So he probably does have HIV. Many people are terrified about getting it, and understandably so, it's a lifelong disease. But how likely are you to get it if you have an entanglement with someone with uncontrolled HIV? Well, it depends on the nature of the entanglement. If receiving anal intercourse per single exposure, it's around 1.4%. Inserting anal is around 0.11%, receiving vaginal is 0.08%, inserting vaginal is 0.04%. These risks can increase when there's another STI present though, as that can cause cuts in the mucous membranes that lead to higher chances of infection. In modern times though, even if someone gets HIV, it can be controlled so much that it doesn't actually cause the infected person any symptoms. It means being on lifelong meds and regularly having your blood taken to make sure that the amount of the virus in the blood is undetectable. There's been a recent campaign called Undetectable Equals Untransmissible that reassures people that they can't get HIV if the person with the disease has suppressed levels in the blood. Of course, a lot of people are still hesitant about this though, so a question for you smart people, would you have unprotected sex with someone with HIV that has an undetectable viral load? Also, considering I've spoken this much about it, it's probably right that HIV with a cerebral infection gets my second diagnostic guess. Father Nietzsche has AIDS. A negative result proves nothing. On the off chance it's a false positive, I permanently lose any credibility I have left. Treat him for AIDS. Ryan, I'm Dr. Chris Tao. Can we talk? In private, I have some news about Father Daniel Bressa. We believe he has AIDS. Have you been tested? Uh, yeah. And it really isn't any of your business. I want my job back. You never wanted to take that other job. You never wanted to save me. You wanted to offer to save me so you wouldn't feel guilty. Welcome back. AIDS meds aren't gonna work. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, my chest. <sighs> Cerebral microtumors could explain the blindness and the hallucinations. We should start genetic testing. Ryan. Oh, I'm sorry for everything. I know. Even if an absolute truth exists, we can't know all of it. And you can't condemn her for recognizing that. Truth is truth. It was a wrongful accusation! Oh, that was a serious twist back, and now we have the epiphany moment. The hallucination wasn't a symptom at all, so what was it? Has House now admitted to believing in the metaphysical? If House now spends the next three seasons as a born-again Christian, that would be the biggest plot twist since Gandalf came back from the dead. Now, with the hallucinations eliminated, we're left with four symptoms. Necrosis, blindness, skin rashes and chest pain. That surely has to be vasculitis that's affecting the whole system. It could be a giant cell arteritis, but that usually affects older women and he doesn't seem to be in that category. So the other option is granulomatosis with polyangitis. It's a condition that was discovered by Nazi doctors in prison camps by a guy called Wagner and usually presents with coughing up blood or blood in the urine with poor kidney function. It can cause pretty horrific nosebleeds as well, none of which the patient has. If it was so easy though, presenting as a classic case, then there'd be no puzzle. He gets some steroids and he'll be back in his church with his faith restored faster than you can eat an Easter egg. So granulomatosis with polyangitis has to be my third and final diagnostic guess, we are locked in. Question for you smart people, who lives longer, religious people or atheists and by how much? Answers down below and I'll give it to you at the end of the video. Also very interesting that Cuddy initially invited House to her Jewish baby naming ceremony and now has de-invited him and he seems a little bit hard done by that. So let's see what happens. You have Wiscott Aldrich syndrome. Makes you susceptible to all the AIDS stuff without actually having AIDS. You were born with it. Oh, what about my hallucination? Scotch explains that. The fact that I was wrong is not a proof of God. I'm just trying to understand how my life could completely turn around in a single day. Your life will go back to sucking soon enough.
What on earth? He had a genetic disease from birth. Why is it only presenting now? Usually you get an unwell child who keeps getting infections because of a mutation on the X chromosome that can be ear or gut infections and also cause low platelets and chronic eczema. I have to say I would have never gotten that one. I did like how they weaved it together with the priest background and accusations made for some good TV but definitely lost some points on the accuracy front at the end there. Also seems like Cuddy didn't have the guts to re-invite House after de-inviting him. If that isn't a complex relationship, then I don't know what is. This episode was pretty well put together, but not my favourite. I'd say 7.1 out of 10 entertainment, say 5.2 out of 10 accuracy, and 6.8 out of 10 diagnosis. Only 24% of doctors serve more than 30 years before retiring, and religious people live on average four years longer than their atheist counterparts. This episode doesn't make full sense until you watch the previous one where the team treat a cancer researcher who quit here.